Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about Nasdaq. Yeah, I thought I'd give you give you another Nasdaq update uh, as we're heading into the weekend. I also wish you all a great weekend. Um, so enjoy it. <laughs> Hope it will be re relaxing. So let's take a look at this chart. I just want to start again with the bigger picture. You will you see here on the chart the start of the rally. We had this significant rally of the October lows. And I've got two wave counts. They are both at the moment bullish. And I would still expect another all-time high at some point in 2024, probably in the first half of the year. At the moment, that, that would be my expectation. Um, we have the white count and the yellow count. The yellow one is more aggressively bullish. Also, in my S&P updates, there is a more aggressively bullish scenario. Whereas in the white count, we are looking for a deeper pullback in a B wave before a C wave rally begins. Now let's talk about the yellow count first. That's not necessarily my primary scenario, but it is one that needs to be considered. The white count is my primary for now, but I will tell you when I will change my perspective. So in the white count, so in the yellow count, let's start with that first. The market um, rallied in an A wave into the November highs, moved down in a B wave, and we're now in a C wave higher. Uh, in the last video, in the comments, I received a few questions about, okay, why is the fifth wave, because this would be the fifth wave, why is the fifth wave, which would form a more substantial top, why is it an ABC structure? It has to be, it has to do with the structure where from the October 22 lows which can be counted as an ending diagonal, okay? So also the wave 5 of 5 has to be an ABC structure. Uh, ending diagonals are 5 wave moves, and the subwaves, so also wave 5, has to be a corrective wave. So it needs to be counted as an ABC structure, which is possible. So it's just uh, the challenge here with this structure just has been that we didn't see any deep pullbacks. Now we see the first sizable pullback since October 23. But in this, yeah, in the yellow count, um, basically waves A and B are done. This was a one, this was a two, and then we should get these rallies next to 18K plus. In this scenario, wave two could be nearly over, okay? So we could be nearly starting wave um, three to the upside. But I wouldn't really believe it without further evidence. Um, let's go to the one hour chart, talk about that scenario first. In this scenario, the market moved down. I don't have a very reliable micro count here, I have to say that as well. Um, again, there's I basically just wait for the market to clarify a little bit because a, a rally, the next, the first corrective rally, if we get a corrective rally, it should clarify a bit because um, I, ca I cannot confident, confidently say where exactly the A wave will finish. It already came down quite a bit. And to be honest, this just confirms further my perspective that we're likely in the white count because this isn't a clear three wave move down. So if this was a wave two in yellow, I mean, it's possible. Wave twos can be sharp corrections. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. It depends on the support. I mean, support levels are clearly defined. 16,028 is really the key support here. If we see a break below that level, it's more clearly the white count, which we talk about in a minute. In the yellow count, somewhere in this region, I'm I'm looking for a low. I mean, we already had a reaction to the support zone, but that could be only wave B in white. Okay, so uh, it will be the next rally that will clarify from, a, from an analysis point of view what's going on here. But in the wave three in yellow, we should see a very aggressive rally. Now, where would that take us? Just to, give you, just to let you know where, in case the wave 2 bottomed, where should wave 3 take us ideally? And we take the length of the wave 1, go to the low of the wave 2, and I'd like to see at least for wave 3, 18,184 as value, uh, possibly even higher, then a wave 4, then a wave 5, and that could then confirm a more substantial top. So I wouldn't rule out that we see the 19,000 19, range. Uh, oops, I didn't move that. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out that we see the 19,000 range. Now, in a more short-term bearish scenario, the market rallied 
in an ABC structure, yeah, um, but completed already with this ABC a larger A wave. I'm sure you can find a way to count that as a five wave move, but that wouldn't make a difference. So it could be an A wave top. We're now coming down in a B wave, and then we get a C wave rally afterwards. In both scenarios, I'm looking for higher prices. They are both bullish. I would have to change my view below 14,739. Yeah. Um, and it depends on the structure how we come down. But if this is in the white count, the A wave of the larger B wave, then the rally, and I think next week we might see a bit of a rally, a corrective rally. The S&P also suggests we might see a corrective rally next week. And that week will be very decisive because in this rally, if the price reacts to resistance, which I will have to adjust probably, just I will do that in a minute. Um, if that B wave re reacts to resistance and we see a corrective three wave structure, it could set up, um, it, it could be a nice short setup for a C wave down, yeah? So we can explore that further next week. If I go to the 15 minute chart, I just wanna show you the adjusted resistance area because this will be relevant for circular wave B. Just need to slightly, yep. So obviously a B wave can overshoot as well. We always have to consider that. But in an ideal world, you know, the, the B wave would react to this region 16,647 and 16,983. Anything above that could start to shift probabilities towards the yellow count. But for now, we keep it where, you know, keep it like it is. And uh, we'll see. I'm leaning towards the white count, but if we see a sustained or let's say a convincing break above this resistance level, especially in five waves, I would have to consider that wave two bottomed. And if we see an impulse up above resistance, we can watch for the first corrective pullback, which would be the one, two setup within the third wave. And that could be the next, let's say long trade setup. I and mean, we already have one here, but again, I'm just leaning to the white count. You know, if we have two bullish support areas, um, then it can make sense to play them both and to just measure the risk against the lower support area. Just below 14,739, I will have to assume that a larger top, a very large and substantial top has already formed, but I expect that only to happen after the next high. That's my update about the net gas, and not net gas, the NASDAQ. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you're interested in daily updates about the S&P 500, and uh, updates about stocks as well. And sometimes we cover the NASDAQ there as well. And check out our S&P 500 and stock service. You'll find the link in the description. Um, it's the Patreon link. So feel free to check it out and have a great weekend. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.